side. What are we going to see uh, as the change? Because I know since millimeter waves uh, scatter a lot, you need to have uh, really small ones in many number, right? Yes, correct. So as you go higher in spectrum, the propagation is lower. Right. So you need more frequency of sites. So a lot of the things that are being done in many uh, countries, in many cities, is they do lamp posts mm -hmm. or they do street furniture and they put them every, you know, every block or every 150 meters or so. The good thing is that these are not huge, humongous things. A millimeter wave, you can get very small boxes right. to actually do this. And it has a coverage of, you know, a block or two, but it, with a huge amount of capacity. So you could put it on, you know, subway stations or hospitals or stadiums and airports. Uh, convention centers like the one here today yeah. so um, you have the flexibility you know you can do the big uh, tower with the lower bands yeah. or you can go smaller with using the high spectrum right. and have very unique deployments and they both yeah. will work with each other yeah absolutely it's, it's all uh, whether you want to cover you know the lower layers or you want to do so on 5G a is going to scale across all of those frequencies then. absolutely you can do 5G on lower bands you right. can do 5G in bin bands you can do 5G on higher bands so this is the flexibility then exactly exactly so in, in many cases uh, you know the future is that 5G will be across all bands you know right now they're being used for either 4G or 3G right. as time goes by users will have 5G phones and then operators will be able to start reusing some of the lower band spectrum right, to right. put 5G. 5G is a lot more efficient so they probably want to remove the older technology as soon as possible and replace 5G but in reality they need users to have phones that operate on that to be able to remove it. Right, right. And, and the nature of the small uh, uh, um, Devices you can think of it as they like your Wi-Fi access points, for example. Right. They, you could have something around that size that you can put on enterprises, you can put on offices, you can put on your home, and with that you would have 5G capability in these enterprises at gigabits speeds. Right. Right. So that's something very interesting. A lot of uh, people talk about connected tablets, connected laptops, yeah. where yeah. you don't need that much memory, yeah. and all your applications and everything is running on the cloud. Right. Now with that high speed, that fast, you know, low latency, you can do that, but of course you need the network to support it. Right. So you could actually have this kind of small cell access points to give you that kind of capability. 5G is actually, there's a lot of things going on around the world. In the United States, uh, 5G will launch in the next couple months. Okay. Uh, with millimeter wave, actually, the Great. United States is going to be one of the millimeter wave, early millimeter wave deployments uh, around the world. So early 2019, I can't wait in a few months to get my 5G phone. That's and we're going to start using 5G in the U.S. Uh, similarly, there's other countries around the world that will be probably in the second half of 2019. Um, uh, China is looking towards the latter part of 2019 as a okay. soft launch. Uh, Europe, uh, second half of 2019. So, a lot of the world is actually moving to 5G very fast. If I if I think about it, you know, we've been around when 4G was launched. I don't recall the whole world yeah, moving to 4G really all at once. Yeah. Uh, but it seems for 5G things are a little bit different. There is a lot of excitement around it and. A lot of people want to move to 5G very, very fast. That's true. So uh, we're going to start seeing it everywhere. And of course, it's not just from Qualcomm doing the chipsets, but also it's the, whole, the OEM ecosystem, right. the infrastructure ecosystem, the operators, the regulators. Everything needs to come together. And that's what we're finding, that it's, it's all happening. Everybody wants it. And I'm looking forward to experiencing that over the next few months. Uh, at least in the US and soon enough, hopefully you'll we'll come to India very soon. Yeah, hopefully. We have had the 4G experience, I think, only for about three years. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard to and you already, 5G, so and you already surpassed it as the top country 
in the world on data. Yeah. So yeah, it yeah, yeah. seems like you need it. <laughs> yeah, this looks like like from the India Mobile Congress. It does seem like five G is definitely coming here. So, yes. so let's hope. Uh, thanks for that great explanation. Now uh, let's talk about some use cases of actual use cases of five G. Like where will I see five G uh, in action? Yeah. So I think that's. Sometimes the difficulty that fi the flexibility that 5G gives you, um, it's so powerful that it's difficult to enumerate all the use cases. But I can think of several ones where you combine both the speed and the latency to give you things that you couldn't do before. And XR is a perfect example. Right now, there is a limitation, for example, on how much power from a processing point of view and from a yeah. battery consumption point of view, yeah. you can do on XR, you know, there's only XR so much. Is extended reality. Right? Yes, virtual reality or augmented reality. Okay. So, so that's AR, VR, you just put an X, okay. like everything, <laughs> reality. Okay, yeah, right. right, right. Uh, so, the, and the issue is uh, you need fairly large processors to do quality rendering, to do this kind of processing, and it's difficult to to do that, you may not have enough battery, things will heat up. Yeah. So the more you can do on the cloud with huge servers that are actually connected into power sources and not on your device, you can do a lot of rendering on the cloud, you can do a lot of processing on the cloud, but use the speed to be able to just display what you need on your headset. Right. So that's something called, for example, split rendering. So right, right. you don't do all the processing on the device, you can do a lot of it on the cloud. So some of these things can become very light, maybe just very thin glasses that, you know, know those big, thick, yeah. monster head-mounted yeah, displays, yeah, yeah. where you could even have glasses with augmented reality, where you can actually see through. Right. And a lot of the processing is done on the cloud. So, and of course, it needs to be fast because you, you move your head, you need different fields of vision, you right. need different things. So. Again, that's just one example. Uh, telemedicine is another example. Um, you know, everybody talks about autonomous everything, autonomous driving, autonomous uh, things and warehouses, right. autonomous robots. Right. When you have speed, when you have low latency, a lot of things can happen. And I'm sure there is thousands of entrepreneurs out there yeah. thinking about, you know, very bright guys out of colleges and universities and startups thinking, okay, what is going to be the next application or the next cool thing that I can do right. with this kind of speeds and this kind of low latency? So I'm not smart enough to imagine all the things that people are going to come up with. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of very intelligent people out there coming up with use cases for it. But we already envision some that are uh, yeah. kind of low-hanging fruit that uh, yeah. will come fairly quickly. Okay. So I saw this thing about uh, uh, connected cars, mm -hmm. like the autonomous self-driving cars that are connected with each other, uh, is it, it's called C V 2 x if I'm not wrong. Yes. Right. So what, what are the fundamentals of this, like, uh, how, how does it work, the C V 2 x Yeah. So um, today almost, you know, I think almost every manufacturer has a connected car in some way or another. Um, and the question is not just connectivity because you want to download the latest maps and the latest navigation, yeah. which right. is kind of how things started. Okay. Now you're starting to stream you know, music, you're starting to stream uh, you know, different things that around you. But now it's, we're talking about security and safety, right. which you know, it's almost like your airbag and your seatbelt. You know, this is where you cannot see a car coming. You're in an intersection and, you know, the car is telling you, hey, there is a car in the blind spot that I'm not seeing. So right. you need to stop. Yeah. Or it's a foggy morning and, you know, your natural human vision cannot see more than a few feet. And you say, no, slow down because you have a car ahead that maybe has the light turns off or there's a pedestrian crossing. Right. So there's a lot of safety things. Um, that are very important on communication that I think it's going to change. I, I can't imagine the amount of accidents 
and lives that happen today because of we don't have these things. Yeah. Um, on on the other hand, uh, traffic management. You know, I expect uh, India uh, has uh, some some things with that. It uh, being able to anticipate, for example, when uh, traffic lights would change and actually manage traffic that way. You know, if you know, hey. I know this traffic light is going to change in 10 seconds, or you can slow down, or you can continue to speed up. Um, emergency services, know that an ambulance, for example, is coming behind you and you need to, you know, supposed to looking around, where's the ambulance coming from? Right, so you know right. exactly where they're coming from. They see you, you see them. Yeah, yeah. So the whole experience, I think, of driving an automobile, hopefully it changes for the better and not just from a pleasure of not having to hold the wheel, right. but also from a security and safety for everybody around. So uh, I'm very excited about that. Um, I wonder you know, if our kids or grandkids would even know what driving is. You know, <laughs> it's gonna be incredible. You know, it's gonna be, the, they'll be like, oh, you used to actually have to hold a steering <laughs> wheel and, and, yeah. and know where you're going. Yeah. You know, that's gonna, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I'm very excited about that one too. That's great. Yeah. That's great.